Okay, let's go. Let's go. Nice. <clears throat> so, hi everybody, and thanks for joining us for joining us our live webinar today. So maybe you've seen us uh, a month ago uh, for your previous webinar. Uh, so um, I'm Luca. Uh, I'm working at the uh, designers and type designers at Prototypo, and uh, this is Hugo. Hi, uh, I'm Hugo, just like Luca. Uh, I'm a fellow designer here, uh, working uh, as type designer and graphic designer. Uh, so we'll hope you'll enjoy the today's webinar. Yeah, and uh, we'll post a link uh, to download the font that we make today. <clears throat> and after the webinar, as finish it, uh, we are sharing all the instructions uh, in our page and uh, prototype on Facebook. Also, you can find uh, the previous webinar, the first webinar that we did last month uh, on this page, prototype on Facebook, and uh, we'll post the second one. Uh, will be av available, sorry, uh, just after this. Right. <clears throat> So let's go. Okay, so let's go. Um, I'll show you quickly uh, what we're going to do today. So uh, here um, you can see. So that's the, the magazine cover we are going to work on uh, today. So we are going to create this lettering display. Um, and I'm going to take you through all the different steps um, to create this lettering. So uh, I go now on the um, Prototypo app, like this. So here uh, you have the library. So you can choose between five different templates. So uh, all uh, the templates designed here are made by Production Type, which is an established foundry in Paris. And what we are going to take today is the grotesque uh, typeface. So you first need to name your project. So for this uh, webinar, it's going to, do, to be webinar two. So now that I created my project, um, I can go um, I can go through the, the onboarding. But today I want to skip that, that part and do it manually. So. Here you have uh, your templates, and Luca is going to explain you the different <coughs> views and how uh, it's composed. Nice. So first of all, if you have any question, you can put them in the comment section, and we are, we will respond. Uh, so this is the application, and as you see, you have different views. So the first view on the top is the the preview. As we yeah. can see, you can type in the the green line change the word if you want, yes, like this. And the second view is the text view on the right. <coughs> uh, you can insert a uh, complete alphabet or sentences or lorem ipsum or maybe text that you want to, to see. And uh, with that you can see how the text evolves during your process. On the left, you have also the, the working section, working yeah. view, yeah, uh, with different tools. So we come to this later, <clears throat> and um, you have the last view, which is the glyph list that you can find uh, at yeah. the bottom left of the screen. And as you can see, there is a, the entire glyph set appears on the right, and you can choose if you double click, just put you in the working section, yeah. And you can also type the letters you want. So if you, if you click here and it's uh, selected, then if you just type with your keyboard, um, you have the letter you want to work on. And um, you also have uh, so the, the, the parameters on the left. So we have four tabs. Uh, the first is settings, which is uh, to work on the spacing, diacritic position. The small capital height, thickness, and width. Uh, you have the second tab, second tabs, with it, which is sorry, uh, the function tabs uh, to work on next heights, ascenders, descenders, crossbar, width, length, and overshoot. <coughs> the third tab is about the style. 
uh, with the thickness, the contrast, it's more on the, on the shape of the, of the typeface. Uh, and the last tab is about the serif. So, so here you have, yeah. uh, you have 12 parameters um, to create every kind of shape uh, from sharp serif to slap serif typefaces um, to bracketed serif uh, ones. So it's very wide the, 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 the possibilities you can have. Yeah, you have a large panel to work. And the last, uh, last thing, important thing, is the individualization group. So here at the top uh, right of the screen. Yeah, you have these uh, options. Uh, basically, in Prototypo, when you are working with the sliders, it's uh, apply in all the glyph sets. But you can also choose one, two, three, or maybe a group of glyphs to work on. And uh, with this option, you can select those you want. Like, uh, for, I don't know. Uh, if you want to name it uh, Ascenders, just for the P, uh, for example. And I think we are going to go back to this. Just, yeah, we are um, going to, we are going to this use thing. this this um, option. So just to sh to show you, like when it's uh, it turns to yellow, you have uh, you are just working on a group of glyph. So if I just click back, I'm it's I now, I'm now working on the entire uh, typeface. Okay. So let's go. So um, we'll start with um, the sliders first. So to really draft um, the, the, the first steps of the, um, the lettering, uh, get the, the, the thickness we want and so on. And after I will work on with the manual editing here and I, uh, Luca will explain you um, more into details what we're, we can do with that. So the first thing I want to change here uh, is the, the ascender um, value. Since I want to make something very display and very tight, uh, I want to reduce uh, very slightly the ascender value. So like this, I'm fine. Mm -hmm. uh, I also want uh, to change uh, a bit the width of the typeface. Not so much, but just a bit like this. Then I jump uh, to the, um, the styling tab about the to thickness. get the thickness uh, I want. So it's about 152. Like a bold version? Yeah, it's something very, um, very bold and very impactful. And so I don't want to add any contrast. Um, the aperture, I will apply that, but with the um, individualization group. Uh, and now I want to change also, uh, I want to edit the serifs. So here they are not visible, but if I use the slider, they appear. So um, I want something around 80. Not too wide, but <coughs> something consistent. Now I just edit the serif height to make mm -hmm. something thicker and more, that appears more like a slap serif typeface. And, and here... Does your, does your serif have the same, the same thickness as the, the strokes? Yeah, I try to have um, something quite thick to, okay. to match the, um, the thickness of the stems. So what you can do also when you are at the end of the slider is uh, you can edit manually the values. So since I want something even thicker, I just need to write, and now I'm at 110, to yeah, have something even thicker. You can go over the sliders. Yeah, uh, if you want to do something more experimental, or if you know uh, what you're doing, you can just set the value and get where you want. Um, then I want to change some details. So here to show you, I just zoom in. So I want to add bracketed curves. So, just something like this makes the transition smoother. And uh, I want something very geometrical. So, I just change the serif roundness here and I turn it to zero. So, therefore, I get something um, even more geometrical. Like this. Okay. It's close to what I'm doing. 
Uh, so now that I'm okay with uh, these first settings, I can change the spacing to make something, uh, this setting tighter, like this. And I will go back manually to the spacing uh, after a while. So now that I'm right with the, the first draft of the typeface, uh, I can edit the serif components. So maybe Luca, if you want to explain uh, what we have here, yeah, the four so, different tabs. <clears throat> so in the working area, you have the first tab, which is uh, just to move around your letter. Right. The second is about the components. So if you want to add or remove some serif, yeah. For example, here Hugo is just changing the the, the components. So here, I think for your for your design, we don't need the serif on the yeah. On this so paper. the idea is to remove the serif just on the S. And as you can see, on the V2 of Prototypo, you have two options more here, which is change all similar, and uh, it will apply your choice and every serif of this kind. Right. So for the S is for the S cap and etc. etc. Yeah. Um, the third tab is about uh, the manual editing. So it's like uh, it's, it's about points, skeleton points, and contour skeleton skeleton yeah, contours points, shapes points, and um, <clears throat> you can move the, the you can move your your points to change the the letters and the proportion, and you can also in this little area. Uh, type the value of x in i. Yeah, you can just change the position um, if you if you want something very precise. Very more precise, yeah. And, and the last is about the shadow, but I think we don't need it. We don't need it today, but um, you can drag uh, OTF files uh, yeah. if you already worked on a different typeface and you want to see if it's similar or if you want to make variants, uh, it's very useful. Yeah, if you have a model like this to, to start your project, you can just put it in the shadow and inspire you from, yeah. from this model. So what I also want to remove is uh, here with the Y. Um, since the I have too many serifs, I just remove this one. Okay. So with the serifs, uh, I'm fine. Now I can uh, just uh, use the, the the groups. So I want to change the aperture, the, the the endings of the S and the A. So I just say I just go to the group mode. So I just want to work on the aperture. So you name your group, and then uh, you select the glyphs that need to be changed. So here is the A and the S. Okay. So once I, I save my changes... So the aperture is about just to, to close or to open a bit the, yeah. the letters, yeah. Here it's very subtle, I don't want to make something extreme, mm -hmm. uh, but I, as you can see, you can have something yeah. very closed or something very open. Yeah, it's about the angle. You can al always reset the values if you want to go back to the, um, to the, 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 the first step. And today I just want to close it, but very in a very subtle way, like this. So for me that's enough. Um, to have something more compact, which fits my design. So now, we that, now that I'm done with uh, the, the, the groups, I just click back to all, all glyphs, and I can uh, continue my, my work. So we are done with the, the, with the, the, the settings here. With the sliders, we worked um, with the serifs, we worked with the group, and now we can work uh, with the manual editing. So um, my letters are fine. I just want to change some some curves. Uh, so for example, yes, I want to work on the transition of the spine, for example. So as Luca explained before, yeah. how the, the 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 points were are working. Yeah, you have. Two types of points. So the first type is the, the green points, the green points, um, which are the skeleton points. But as you can see, when you move one, the two around this move with it, with it. And the other points are the blue points, 
This is more like the shape point. Yeah. It's the uncurved point. Uncurved point. Here sorry. it's the skeleton point, and yeah. here it's the uncurved. And you have the endo uh, next here. to this point. You yeah. are changing the, the shape, right. the curve, precisely, like this. You can change the tension and the curviness of the typeface. Yeah. So it's about the, the it's about this point, and each skeleton point is related to two. Yeah, uh, shape points. Two uncurved points. Uncurved points. Sorry. So here, to move the, the to to <coughs> correct this curve, I just need to to sh move um, my skeleton point like this. So with the keyboard, you just need to press Shift, and with the arrows, you can um, you can move your point uh, ten per ten units. So like this, it's fine for me. I just want to open a bit my design. Put the spine <clears throat> up. Okay, maybe you don't see our cursor, so go. Can yep. you can you just go? Okay. Yeah, just right click here. Yeah. Um, um, let's say right click the one you're using and capture. No, maybe here. Okay. And we don't have this. So maybe you don't see okay. our cursor. Never mind. <coughs> Never mind. I hope it will be fine like this. <laughs> um, but you will see the changes I'm doing anyway. Um, I can explain very precisely what I'm doing. So with the S, I'm almost fine. I just want to change my angle. So I just work with the angles, the, my two angles. Yeah. Then I move uh, this point a bit, and I'm I'm quite close from where I want to go. Um, just a little question for uh, the users: When you are moving this point at the right. at the bottom, is it in the middle of the curve, or? So visually, it's pretty much in the it's pretty much centered between this point and this point here. Okay. Um, it it makes something smoother in terms of curves, but then it's it's not exactly uh, placed in the middle. But it's it's a good way to put your points and make corrections on your curves. So with the S, I'm I'm happy now. I want to add contrast with the P. So. Here I'm just working with this point. I'm not touching the skeleton points since I don't want to move it. And again with the, um, the arrow with the keyboard like this. You can see now my, my points moved with the, um, the other one. So I want to correct uh, this counter shape. So I just move it back like this. Then so this one. Yeah, more in the middle. Yeah, to right, put it more in the middle of, of this this shape, so it, it looks better now. Mm -hmm. um, and the last letter I really want to work on is the A. So here it's just about moving my points to get the right shape. So here, um, if I move this one, the other one goes up since they are linked. So now I'm fine with the shape. This. I want to make it to go put it down. This one, I want to put it up. Those two, they can move together, so it's very handy. I don't need to move points um, by points. Here, I want to have the same contrast as I have on the P junction. Yeah, it's about uh, some coherence. Yeah. It needs to be um, linked to the, the yeah. other letters in order to be consistent. Exactly. So here, if I want to work more precisely, I can really zoom in. And if I double click, it goes back to the, the, the default view. So here, I'm, I'm fine with this part. Here, I just and want to put this down. And you can see all the, the manual editing and correction are about uh, make the curves more smooth and don't have too many angles and make some consistent between uh, between the letters like the A and the P 
Right. Yeah. It's it's about. Um, I mean, you, you can move every point to get what you want. If you want something smoother, uh, if you want less tension or more tension with the curves, it's it's very um, useful. And here, what I will do is work with the distribution, so I can just move my skeleton points. If I press D, here, I'm just moving um, my distribution and my skeleton point. Yeah. So here, I just want to work with this point. So now. I can change my handle. If I press Option and Command and I click on it, I can just move one handle so I can be very precise. And here I want something rounder. And what I also want to do is to um, have something longer, longer terminal. So I change it like this. So uh, just a small question for you, for the users. Yeah, <clears throat> as we can see here, you have the two lines and your hay and all the, the rounded terminism, termination. Yeah, uh, are just go at the bottom. They so go beyond the, 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 the this yeah. line. Uh, so it's what we call the overshoot. So if you look at the L, you see that it's here. Yeah. If I take all the round letters. It's going um, a little bit beyond the bottom, like this. So it's it's a visual, um, it's an optical correction to make all the shape um, look um, at, the, at the same size. The same size yeah, exactly. Otherwise, if my my shape is not going beyond, mm -hmm. it will look smaller than the L or than the E or my N. So this way, we can make. Um, Corrections and optical corrections. So maybe you can just adjust a bit your your S with your version to have the same. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. So here, Man, and can you just um, show us with the overshoot sliders, maybe? Or I can do it. Um, but now, since my S is with a group, yeah, okay, um, it's it's preferable to do it manually. So okay. I just it's manually. very easy. I just take my skeleton point. And I move it with the with the arrows. So now I'm exactly on this line. And with the S, same. Now I'm I'm fine. With the A, um, I'm I'm getting something quite close from what I want. Just moving this point a bit on the left side. And I also want my A to be a bit wider than the rest of the typeface. So there is one point controlling the others and changing um, changing the um, the width of my typeface. So now I'm 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 fine with all these letters. I just want to make a small change with the serif to close a bit this gap. So same, it goes very fast. Just moving this a little bit. Okay. And um, just putting a little bit of contrast here. So I'm just moving my point like this. Okay. So now with um, all my shapes are fine uh, in terms of weight, in terms of contrast, in terms of um, how the curves are 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 made. So what, so what next? Now I want to refine my spacing. So okay. you saw previously that I worked with the spacing um, here which is changing every, every letter spacing, but I can also um, change it on one specific letter. So here, with my S, I can see it's centered, but here I want to put more space on the right space, right side of the letter, like this. Also, so what's the advice to manage a bit the spacing? The idea is to have the same optical space between each letter. Okay. So if I see that I have more white, I have a white gap between two letters mm -hmm. and it breaks the rhythm of the word, then I can correct that. <clears throat> so here you see it's quite tight till here, yep. but then the P and the L and the L yep. and the A are quite far from each other. And that's something I can adjust. So just working with the L, if I'm moving, uh, the spacing bar here, already it's, it's better, 
I can do the same with the right side of the P. So now it looks a lot better. And I can do the same with the Y. So it could be on with the Y or with the A, like this. And you can also edit your spacing in the preview view. That's it. Yeah, yeah you can also uh, edit here. But if you want something very precise, of it's, course. it's a lot better to do it here. Uh, so now I'm I'm done with my um, my lettering. Uh, everything looks as I want. If I just um, remove the glee view, you can see that everything is fine, and it looks uh, as as uh, we wanted before. Yeah, nice. So if you want to explain so, yeah. how we no, export it. No, the, next, the next step is, uh, is to export your font. Uh, when you go to the, the file section, you can find the export option. And then it works, uh, it's an OTF file. So it works on every software. Uh, it works on every uh, typefaces uh, software and, and all the... the, the Design software, right? Yeah, and um, so, so now I'm just installing my typeface. So now, yeah, we are just putting into like the this. Okay. So now that it's installed, I'm fine, and I'm ready to so go back to my design. Go back to the to our software. Okay. So now I want to see my design. Yeah. So uh, once your so your here, yeah when, once your typeface is installed on your computer, you can just go and search it. So that's it. like a default typeface, and I can just uh, replace and see that I'm getting my design here imported, and now I can just um, I can just refine my design and and do whatever I want with the typeface. And what, what you can see here is uh, all the changes I made on the typeface, they, they were um, applied on the entire glyph set. So the typeface here uh, is the same as this one. So that's something quite powerful and you're saving a lot of time because it's it makes every changes in real <coughs> time uh, on the entire glyph set. Yeah, sure. So let's go back to the heads. <laughs> Hey, so uh, okay, now there you go. Uh, yes, so cool phone for a magazine. Uh, we hope you liked it, and uh, we'll be back again soon for another webinar. Um, maybe if you have some suggestions or requests of design, we can if, make if you have feedbacks, uh, yeah. yeah, suggestions, even um, suggestion for the next webinar if you want to, to see something in particular. Um, and the next time, sorry for this time, but the next time we'll have the cursor. Sorry for right. this, uh, sorry. this little mistake. But um, so don't forget to download the font. Yeah, uh, sure. We we've been working on today. Uh, it's available um, on the the Facebook uh, account, I think. Yeah, yeah, put it into Facebook account. Right. And uh, if you want to let us any comments, um, sure. Please share. Yeah. <laughs> Feel free to do it. Yeah. So see you next time, guys. Thanks for joining us. Yeah. And cheers. Bye. Bye. -bye.